It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview USA Wrestling Forrest Molinari. How are you doing yeah. today? Great, thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to be a professional wrestler? Um, so when I was younger, um, I started wrestling a lot later than most people. I didn't start till freshman year of high school. Um, at first, I played baseball, and I thought I was going to be the first girl in the majors. So, obviously, I had lofty goals from a young age. Um, I started wrestling because I wanted to play football, and they said no because I was too small. And I just kind of fell in love with it at first. Um, it wasn't big goals. You know, everyone's goals when they're kids is win the Olympics, be a world champion. I wasn't thinking that big yet. Like, I just wanted to be on varsity. I just wanted to win state. I wanted to get a scholarship to college. You know what I mean? And, and as I progressed, the goals got bigger and bigger. And now here we are uh, training to be a world and Olympic champion. What was your time like in college, of course, wrestling for King University? Uh, college was awesome. I absolutely love King. I love Jason Mormon, who's still the head coach there. Um, you know, I wouldn't be the wrestler I am today without King. If I had never gone there, I don't know what my life would look like now. It had that big of an impact on me and my career. Um, we have a saying at King called King Style. And King Style has a lot of things, but it's holding yourself to a certain standard. It's an attitude that you have, the way you approach training, the way you approach competition, really everything, the type of person you are, you know, King style. And uh, it just has a certain attitude with it, you know, and I feel like I've really embodied that over the years. And it's great to, you know, get to be a representative of King. Um, and just, just the time that I had there, I mean, I wouldn't trade my college days for anything. I absolutely loved it there. What was your time like at Missouri Bishop? Uh, Missouri Baptist. So my freshman year, I went to MOBAP and then I transferred after my freshman year. Um, my freshman year at MOBAP was really hard. I mean, moving across the country, I was still 17 when I moved out of mom and dad's house, you know, and went to college. I was really young and I had to learn a lot of hard lessons that you probably learn all through your twenties. I learned like in one year, you know, just how to take care of myself and wrestling and, and realizing that I did have big goals in wrestling and that I wanted to put myself in the best situation possible to pursue those goals. Um, and, and, you know, lots of outside stuff that just comes with growing up when you're a kid. And so it was a good learning experience to say the least. What were some of your accomplishments during your college wrestling time? So I'm a four-time All-American. And this is back when women's wrestling only had one national championship. Didn't matter what division your school was. We had one national championship. And I still think like the OG WCWAs are by far the hardest women's national tournament, way harder than today's. That's my opinion. Um, but at WCWAs, I was a four-time All-American. I took fourth, third, first, second. So national champ, runner-up, um, so that's it for college accolades. Of course, what was it like in 2016 whenever you were with King University and you won national championship? Uh, I was just on a mission that year. I was uh, wrestling up a weight, so I wasn't cutting a whole lot. It just, I knew where I stood amongst the other colleges, the other uh, collegiate wrestlers, and I just, there was no doubt in my mind I was going to be a national champ. Um, early in the year, I wrestled this one girl named Jessica and lost to her like the very first tournament of the year. And like from that point on, I was on a mission to wrestle her again. And I was trying to like meet up with her at tournaments or a dual meet or anywhere. I was like head hunting for her. 
and I didn't get to wrestler until the national finals and uh, ended up beating her in the finals pretty good. So I just, but after I won my national title, like I was happy, but I wasn't freaking out because I just knew in my mind, like I was going to do it, you know? What was that moment like, obviously, when you won the national championship and you got to hoist it up for yourself and obviously for King University? Ah, uh, man, it was so long ago now. I'm getting old. <laughs> I remember getting my hand raised and just looking to my corner and my coaches were in the chairs and then all my teammates are like sitting right behind them, right? And they all are just jumping up and screaming and I'm watching them and I'm like, I'm like, shoot, I won. Like I did it. Like I really did it. And, and it didn't really hit me at first until I saw all of them freaking out so excited. And it was just, it just felt really good to know I set out to do something. I'm a big goal to put my mind to it. And I mean, I just went hard all year until I got the job done. And at King, outside of our wrestling room, we have this long hallway that you always walk down before you go in the wrestling room. And we've got every um, men's All-American and uh, every women's national champion. We can't put all the All-Americans up for the world. There's too many, but we have the national champions up, which there's still a ton for King. And uh, another mission, along with being the national champ, was getting my photo on the wall, like, and it seems like silly now when I look back on it. But when, you know, when I was in college, that was a big deal to me. I wanted my photo on the wall. I wanted to be a national champ. And so it felt good, you know, to just see my picture get put up there. Of course, after your time in college with King, what was it like to obviously be on the U.S. national team? So after uh, I graduated, um, later that fall, I moved out to the Olympic Training Center um, cause that at the time that was kind of the only place to go after you graduated, most people went to the Olympic training center if they wanted to continue wrestling. Um, that following year I made my first world team and the year I made my first world team was actually my first year on senior national team as well. Uh, before that I had taken like fourth or fifth at trials, but I had finally not only made national team, but made my first world team. And it was the same kind of feeling as uh, as when I won my national title. Like I had set my mind that this is what I wanted. This was the goal. I'm going to make this world team. And I just kept going, kept going until I finally got it done. And, and when I did make the world team, I was pumped. Like there's photos of me like screaming and, and just like flexing, like so excited because I know I finally got over that pump. I finally had asserted myself on the senior level in the States that I was the real deal. I was coming up and it was my time to start taking over. Of course, what was the 2019 world championship like for you? 2019 worlds. So 2018 worlds was my first world championships. 2019. All right. I've already been to world championships. I know my way around only mission now obviously the next step I want to be a world champion and 2019 I would have bet my life on it I was going to be a world champion and I, I was just ready I felt so ready and I was in the semifinals match and five seconds left I make a boneheaded mistake and and I thought I was winning on criteria that's a mistake on my part, not only making the mistake, but then after thinking I was still winning on criteria, time runs out. I end up losing like five, five criteria. And I, I was just so beside myself. I was like, I can't believe I just let it slip away. And, you know, it's two years later and knowing that I not only lost the world championship, because I think I would have beat the Russian that won it in the finals, but then the next day, I couldn't pull myself out of the hole. I just couldn't get my mind right anymore. And I ended up losing a bronze medal, too. And, you know, two years later, man, it burns just as bad as it did the moment I lost. Um, but I also used that to, to motivate me. You know, I never want to feel that feeling again. And, of course, it, it still happens, but it put – it puts me in a position to do everything in my power to prepare myself so I never am in that position again. 
Um, so it was hard, you know, it was another learning experience. I was still kind of on the younger side for a, for a world team. And now, you know, I'm, I'm a veteran now I'm 26 years old. Uh, I've been around the block. I've made world teams. I've wrestled some of the best wrestlers in the world. Like it's my time. Of course. What was the moment and feeling like whenever you got to put on the team USA singlet for the first time and obviously have your name on the back and obviously represent the United States? I think my very first USA singlet, I made the junior world team in 20, I think it was 2015. Yeah, 2015. And not only was Junior Worlds obviously my first uh, age group world team, but I think it was my first international tournament as well. So for your first international tournament to be a world championship, that's that's pretty big. Um, but I remember, like, I just was so excited because – I felt like I'd finally broke through obviously age group level, but I was like, I'm on the junior world team. Like, you know, I don't know. Like it, I wasn't just like another kid that was like kind of showing up to camp. I was like, no, I'm, I'm here. Like I really want to do this and I want to represent you. You know, that's so hard to make the team USA like world or Olympic team, senior level, obviously, but even the age group teams, it's so competitive. So to get to have a USA singlet with your name on it, like that's something really special, you know, how many people get to represent team USA? Of course. What was it like this previous year in 2020 competing for the Olympic wrestling trials? So after COVID, obviously everyone trying to get things figured out and get ready for the trials, which were actually ended up being April of 21, but the 2020 trials, um, you know, getting ready, I had a lot of stress and I just, I felt like I was grinding through everything. Honestly, it, it wasn't my smoothest preparation for a tournament. And in my mind, I'm so headstrong that I'm like, I don't care how bad the situation is. I'm going to just get it done. Looking back now, um, obviously hindsight's 2020. There's a lot of things I think I could have done differently to maybe better prepare myself. And maybe I could have been, the, you know, it, fixing those things. You know, maybe I would have been the Olympian. I still, even with stuff not going as smoothly as I'd like before the tournament, I still believe with all my heart that I was ready to beat Mensa. And, you know, I didn't get a chance to wrestle at the trials. That's on me. But then Mensa goes and wins the Olympics. It's like, man, I, I feel like I would have beat her. Maybe I would have been an Olympic champion this summer, you know? So that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow. But like I said before, it just adds more fuel to the fire about to be a world champ, you know, next month in Oslo. Of course, what is a typical match like for you? Um... I don't, I'm not one of those wrestlers that like thinks very methodically when I wrestle. I, uh, I'm just all like instinct and feel for me. So consciously there's not a whole lot going on. Everything's just off feel. And maybe the only conscious thing that really floats through my mind is, is just going harder. Like I'm just looking to smell the blood in the water, uh, like a shark and just, you know, put the nail in the coffin when I see it. Um, when I see that little crack, that means pick it up even more. Like my pace is already high, pick it up even more and really just make them crack it and have it, you know, be a done deal. Of course, pre preparation wise, do you have any game day rituals and routines that you do before the, obviously you get out for your match? Yes. So obviously everyone has kind of like an after weigh-ins routine of, of what you like to eat and drink, like what fuels you well how you like to warm up. I like to always get a really hard warm up in. Um, one ritual I have is I have this lucky penny, this lucky Irish penny that was given to me by a close friend's mom back in high school. And when we were in high school, when we were kids, it was really special if you got one of these pennies because you had to earn it. And not a lot of people had them. Uh, and I, since high school rest, I put it in my sock and I've wrestled Every single match, domestically, internationally, I've had that penny in my sock. Uh, 
shout out to Chris Gonzalez for that. And my other ritual is I always have to shake my coach's hand before I go out. Um, we don't have like a cool handshake or anything. It's literally just a plain handshake. Always got to shake coach's hand before I step on the mat. Um, those, so those are my two like really uh, superstitious rituals. <laughs> Who are some of the wrestlers that you look up to? Um, uh, one aspect to that, anyone who is just driven and works hard and has a really pure, uh, motivation to pursue wrestling and become great. You know, you can always respect hard work, even if it's a little kid, uh, wrestlers that I look up to on the flip side of that is obviously, uh, Mark Perry, my coach. Uh, I just think his story of how he came up and what he was able to accomplish in college against Johnny Hendricks. Like that's almost like a fairy tale wrestling story, you know, and just what it took up here for him to do that. Uh, you know, I have uh, the utmost respect for it and his knowledge of wrestling, his wrestling mind. I mean, it's unbelievable what he knows about the sport and how he can see it and, uh, and relate it to people. So Mark Perry's, uh, probably the wrestler I look up to the most of course what are some of your favorite memories and moments during your wrestling career um god there's so many it's been years now my favorite moments probably aren't even the wins but um just little things with my teammates and the friends that I've made you know Everyone says it, but it's true. You make you make lifelong friends in this sport, and there's just so many times that I, I think of memories with my friends in wrestling, and it just puts a smile on my face. There's too many to tell you. It would take me hours, you know. But um, it could be something even as silly as like one time we were on a flight coming back from from a tournament, and I'm sitting next to one of my teammates, Michaela Beck. She's like a little sister to me. And she was making a joke. I don't, I don't even remember what it was about, but I remember us, we were just laughing so hard. We were like crying, you know, little things like that, that just stick with you. Um, those are special. I mean, when Kayla, another one of my teammates here made her first senior world team. And I like almost started crying because, and, and when she made the Olympic team, because I was just so proud of her. You know, um, special moments like that are my favorite memories. Of course, what are some of your future plans in your wrestling career? So obviously we're leaving for world championships this week and world, I want to be a world champion October 5th and 6th in Oslo. Um, but some other, you know, goals I have are aside from being a world Olympic champion, are just making the biggest positive impact I can on the sport and not in a conventional way. Um, I want to be a different kind of role model. I don't want to be your typical cookie cutter role model. Um, you know, I'm already like a little off the wall as it is. And I want that to be someone that parents like and that kids can look up to, even though it's not the usual, um, the usual. And also, this kind of goes with wrestling, but I, after wrestling, I want to fight. I want to go into MMA and I want to be an MMA champion. And I just want to prove in both wrestling and MMA that I am one of the best to do it. Um, and that's something that drives me, you know, every day. Of course, speaking about that, as you said, you wanted to get into MMA. What is some of the preparation you're doing now to prepare you for, obviously, once you decide to hang up your singlet and go into MMA? Um, so once I moved to Arizona, I started boxing maybe once or twice a week just to start learning how to strike properly. And I've been doing that for a little over a year now. So I'm starting to understand the very basic fundamentals, but I think fundamentals are, you know, most important when you're learning something. And then I also have obviously my wrestling background. And then I did go down to Brazil to Pitbull Brothers for a week and get to really submerge myself in an MMA gym. 
and, uh, you know, just pick up all kinds of little pieces here and there. I've started studying the sport a lot more, um, just tactical things, mindset, how they move, because there is obviously, you know, uh, a little bit of a learning curve when you switch from wrestling to MMA. There's a lot, you know, a lot more stuff. It's way more dynamic. So uh, just studying it right now and kind of wrapping my mind around that kind of sport so that when I do step in fully, I've got a little bit of an understanding. I'm not so green. Of course, as you try to make the transition, who are some of the people in the MMA and UFC community that you look up to and obviously will love to be inspired by? Um, right off the bat, the first one that comes to mind is Eric Albarson. Um, everyone calls him captain. He's Henry Cejudo's coach. He, uh, he is a coach that really does stuff for the athletes, you know, and he's been helping me a lot you know, starting to get my feet wet in the MMA world and looking for opportunities for me. And it's not like I'm even in MMA yet. He's really trying to help me just network already. So him for sure, you know, he would, he comes from a wrestling background. He understands my world. He knows what I need to do to be successful in MMA. So I really appreciate him. Uh, Henry Cejudo, you know, greatest combat athlete of all time olympic gold medalist to two division ufc champ like his his legacy is just amazing and um i also really like uh could be could be your mega med off obviously i think my fighting style is going to look very similar to his and uh he just stays true to what he's about what he believes in and what he does and that i have a lot of respect in that regardless of what people say whether they like it or not he stays true to what he's doing that's pretty cool of course what what advice would you give college athletes looking to be college wrestlers and then obviously move on to the professional wrestling um for college athletes, I think one of the biggest things is organization. Obviously, you're a full-time athlete and a full-time student. Organization is huge. Don't procrastinate on stuff. Just get it done. If it was for wrestling, you'd probably get it done right away. Well, just if it's for school, just get it done. Another one is discipline. Um, I think I, when I look back now, there was some stuff that I was really lax with. In, that had to do with wrestling uh, my work ethic was there but stuff maybe like nutrition or hydration I could have done a much better job or how I cut my weight um, and obviously in college you know we're kids coming into adulthood like you're still you're learning a lot but I think being much more disciplined and being more of a professional even at a younger age with uh with stuff with wrestling I, I would tell them to do and just forget like you know, your parent on you or your coach is hard on you or whatever it is. Don't forget, like, why you're wrestling. Like, why do you wrestle? Why do you enjoy wrestling? Know what your why is, like your true why. And then remember that when you, uh, I don't know, when days are hard, you know, or the days that you're enjoying it. Don't forget to be grateful. What advice would you have current and future professional wrestlers that are wrestling now? Kind of the same advice as the college ones. Um, when you get into the, like, my level of wrestling, you have to be a professional. Don't ever take shortcuts. Don't shortchange something. Like, whether you want to do it or not, get it done. Be a professional in all aspects of your life. Nutrition, hydration, your training, your schedule, all of it, your mental game. Be a professional because all of that is absolutely required if you want to accomplish the highest level, be a world champion, be an Olympic champion. Like all of that's con like just consistency right off the bat. Then you got to have your X factor. So, you know, all those things are so important. You can't take the slightest shortcut. You got to be all in every day. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you out on social media? Um. For Twitter, I'm not as big on Twitter, but I do have Twitter. My uh, handle is that. My name is underscore jungle. For Instagram, my handle is at forest underscore AK underscore snowflake, all lowercase. Thank you again, Forrest Molar, for your interview. Molinari. Molinari. Mm -hmm. 
for your there interview you and best of luck in your future at, in your career. Great. Thank you so much. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again for your interview and best of luck in your future. Great. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.